You have to be yeah. clear on your expectations. And if people don't like clarity, they're not going to like accountability. And if they don't like accountability, they don't belong on your team. I mean, it's really as simple as that. Another simple but harsh, harsh truth for, for some. Three, two, one. Huffing and puffing, so out of style. There's another energy to power the right. Let's achieve your goals through joy, not stress. It's a men green. You cool LA podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Men Green Ukulele podcast, where we talk about achieving your ambitious goals with more joy instead of stress. I'm your host, Geneviève Pépin. I'm a productivity coach and a mindset specialist, and I'm so excited for you to be with me today. As you see, I changed the core. I am visiting family in Canada right now, and you know, I took this opportunity to record a few episodes with awesome, awesome guests. And today, we are talking about how to build a team sustainably without all the stress, right? As high achievers, when we are promoted to a manager, we're leading a business, a department, we're creating our own thing and we have to hire a team, whatever it is, helping people to develop and follow our lead while staying productive and creating the best work possible as a team can be a challenge so how do we do that well that's what we're going to talk about today with krista gurka this is a great one so let's dive into juicy stories and media catch-ups juicy stories and media catch-up media catch-up Welcome to the Men Green Ukulele podcast, and we're getting right into juicy stories and me to catch up. And I'm excited today to be with Krista Gurka. Hey, Krista. Hey, how are you? I am great. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to chat with you and your audience today. Well, it's very, very mutual. So, Krista, I know that we're going to get into juicy stuff today, but before we do, I love to tell the audience a little bit what they need to know about you. Um, so Krista, you're board certified orthopedic physical therapist specializing in Pilates based fitness, rehabilitation, injury prevention, and overall wellness. So that's a mouthful and that's awesome. Um, you also serve as a business strategist and mentor for female boutique fitness and wellness entrepreneurs, which is great. And your wife and a mom of two teenage boys that love to spend time with your family. So you're badass. You rock star <laughs> doing it all over the place. Yeah, right? Definitely full life. Full life, that's awesome. Um, you know, I've heard you say, because I've been on your podcast and I've heard you say that you are an accidental entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So how did you, how did that happen? Yeah, I call myself an accidental entrepreneur because I wanted other people to realize I never had entrepreneurship modeled for me growing up. Um, I really, I thought entrepreneurs were people at, at one point that like actually invented something like they, you know, like Uber, right? Like that would be someone who's an entrepreneur because you invented something that did not exist. My yeah. mom was in... Um, an immigrant. Actually, she was, I would say, a refugee to the United States because she fled Cuba during communism and she never went to college. She worked two jobs. So I just never had that modeled for me. So I never thought that's what I would do. Um, I did know that I would probably be a leader in some sort of my wherever I did work because I did have those skill sets. Now, some people would say you had leadership skill sets. Other people might say you didn't like to play with um, with others. You like to do things the way you do. Either way, that's kind of how I was. So, um, but, I, you know, I had this idea when I was working in, like you said, I'm an orthopedic physical therapist. It makes me sound really boring, but by degree, I graduated with a degree in physical therapy. And we had all of these clients that we were treating in physical therapy with Pilates. And then when they got done with their treatment, they were, they loved Pilates and we would just send them out to these different studios around the city. And I thought, gosh, that just seems so silly. Like we have all of this built in clientele. Why don't we provide a service where they can stay afterwards? It's like a win, win, win for them. Cause they trust us already win for us because we can kind of keep working with them. 
And my boss at the time was like, that actually is a really good idea. Why don't you do it? And I was like, me? (laughs) So that's how it started. I didn't know anything. I didn't know. And even at that time, I didn't even consider myself an entrepreneur because I never left my, I didn't leave my job at the time. Mm. I just said, I'll do both, I guess. And I just learned as I went. So that's why I say I'm an accidental entrepreneur. I didn't think in a million years that I would grow a seven figure business. Actually, a, our company Pilates in the Grove just surpassed $11 million in collective revenue. So I like oh. to make that clear. Cause I think there are a lot of marketing numbers out there where people will say I'm an eight figure business, but that could be over how many years is eight figures. I'm a seven figure business. Is that in one year? Is that in like 10 years? What does that look like to people? So annually we are seven figure business collectively from the time of inception over the last 11 years, we just surpassed $11 million. So I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Yeah. Celebration. That's really awesome. That's really awesome. And well, you know, this is quite an accomplishment and this is not something I'm guessing that you've done alone, right? Like you, as a leader, you've actually help you, you, you lead the vision for a team. And that's yes. something that I remember us talking about in terms of, of working with a team and how that can be a challenge in the journey. And I'd love to hear a little bit how, what was that journey like for you to actually grow and create a team that would follow you and help you get to where you are today? That's a great question um, because I think, to be honest, that was the hardest part of getting to the point where I am today. That that really, everything business-wise I could learn, and I did learn, to become the leader that I needed to be for the team and the company to grow, I needed to become a different person, myself personally. Mm. So when I did start my business, I always knew that I didn't want this to be only me. I had two small children at the time. Um, Even though I was accidental, I did know that I didn't want to be like bound to the business, meaning forever, right? I wanted it to be a team approach. I didn't want it to name it myself, et cetera, et cetera. So I always knew from the beginning I was going to hire people. So I started out that way. Um, And the way that we started, I was like, they're not Krista Gurkha's clients. They are, my business is called Pilates in the Grove. We are a team approach. Now, initially, I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. So I think people just followed the way that I did things, right? So the way that I spoke to people, the way that I designed class schedules, the way that I did pricing, that everyone that came on board, I was there all the time. So they just kind of followed along and I was taking the lead on the majority of things. That works until it doesn't work. I think Muhammad Ali was the one that said like, everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face. That's really what happened because I didn't create any infrastructure really. I didn't create any SOPs or, or processes. It was just all in my head. So, there came a point where when I started to expand and open more locations, it, I was like, why is this not working? Right. And I had basically created a business model that revolved, even though I had team people revolved entirely around me. And that was my own doing Mm -hmm. not purposefully, but I didn't really know any better And I think I had a lot of these owners mindsets, especially owners that are the technicians in the business. So in other words, the people that, so, you know, I I call like, again, I entrepreneurs, I thought of differently. I thought of myself as a business owner because I was the product, right? I taught classes. I was a physical therapist. I was the product. And so I was just like, everyone has to do it like I do. I was of that mentality. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I started doing things it was just, it's easier for me to do it myself. And I'm sure that with what you do, I think we spoke a little bit about this on, on my podcast and it's really backwards thinking for business owners, but I understand it. I understand it. We have so much on our plates sometimes that we're like, it's just easier for me to do it myself. But the way that I 
equate this is, and, and, and my apologies if this is, let's just say if you're watching small children. So whether you have children, nieces and nephews, grandkids, it's brutally hard to watch children learn how to tie their shoes, right? Especially when you're maybe a parent or a grandparent or a babysitter or whatever that needs to go. Like you got to go, you got an appointment, you got another toddler that's screaming, you got to go. And this poor kid's trying to tie his shoes. And what do we want to do? We just want to do it for him. Let me just do that for you. But if we do it for them, they will never learn how to tie a shoe. And so it's like that in our business, right? So we are just like, well, let me just do it for you. Or let me just talk to that client for you. Or let me just, but if we don't let them fail and make mistakes, we, we create a system where we have to do everything. And then we get pissed off when we're like, oh, why? Just nobody cares. I'm like, no, you created that. Yeah. 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 Right. I, I love this. I love the, the watching a kid <laughs> tying his shoe. It's such a great analogy and it, and it, uh, communicates that thinking so well. What was the first thing that she did? Because when it comes to changing your mindset and changing the whole way like you're like oh, okay i'm not the pro i don't have the processes that i need to have like i, I but i have all of this work to do right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's it's like when you come to that realization it's very um it can be like very overwhelming so i'm just i'm just wondering where did you start in order to make those changes and change your mindset to more of a business owner that would have a team yeah. So what happened was it's actually twofold. And I think this is a pretty common path for some people too, but they don't get to the second part. So the first part was I did realize that I needed better solutions. So in other words, I needed more infrastructure and I didn't know how to do that. So I went through a business like training pro, like how to create processes, a business process, right? Um, and it was in there that, that I started to hire managers. And I was like, okay, I need kind of like a buffer between myself. And by this point, I probably had 15, 16, 17 employees. So you can imagine all the communication lines, you know, going yeah. through, right? Um, so I, I did this thing. And in the process, what I thought was I'm going to start to promote people within the company. Okay. So, I, but what I didn't realize was I didn't, I just, because again, I thought, you know, Hey, you know, Genevieve works for me. She's been, she's a great employee. She's been very loyal up until this time. I'm going to make you a manager. Anyone who's managed people understands that this is like a totally different skill set. Right. So it's, so maybe you, you do it because you don't want to say no to me, but you don't really know how to be a manager. Right. And then I start saying, well, you're the manager. Now you're supposed to do all this stuff. And you're like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like, I, I'm not really a manager. So that was step one. Step two was when I actually had one of these people that I up leveled into this position. Um, in one of our business kind of, what would we say, like strategy sessions, we started meeting like once a month. Basically it came to a head. They were like, some people were kind of like, you're an egomaniac, you've set us up for this. You're trying to abdicate your decision-making process. I mean, it was bad. When I say bad, it was like bad. And no one really said, Hey, that's not really true. I mean, so much the fact that the, the implementer that was helping us go through this, he was like, okay, we're ripping up the agenda for the rest of the day, because obviously there's something here that needs to happen. Mm. Um, at that point I was like, you know, F this, forget everyone I'm out done. No. And then I, that's when I really realized, you know what, this really is my fault. Not, not my fault. This was my doing. It was just my doing because I knew no other way. I, I think Maya Angelou said once, like, do what you know how to do until you know better. And when you know better, do better. Something like that. I'm butchering the quote. But it was at that time that I realized I myself had to become a different person to be the top of this leadership team. Right. So that's when I started going to therapy. I was very reactive. I was very much 
everyone's against me, right? I didn't know how to listen well. So I had to learn the skills that are required by a leader, right? And then little by little, I started realizing there are some strengths that I have that are amazing. I'm great with strategic planning. I am great with influencing people. And when I say influencing, I mean getting people to be empowered to do what's right for them, not bamboozling people, right? So, but what I did realize too was that because I have a founder's mentality and I kind of, I call this the founder's paradox, founders are built of this nature that we are kind of like hustlers and grinders. We like know how to get through. And sometimes it's really hard to turn that off. So there were times in my managerial roles where I was connecting with staff I was not, I recognize I was not the best communicator because I was always thinking 15 steps ahead. And so what I realized was I, it's best for me as a leader to sit in my zone of genius and my things that I do really, really, really well and hire someone to be the role where it's like some, the staff's confidant and their liaison and their communication to me. Mm -hmm. So that's, those are the big changes that I, I made. And it's, it's like, you know, when business owners come to me now and say, you know, it's my staff and they do this and they keep doing the same thing over and over again. I, my question to them is like, do you expect a different outcome? Cause you have not changed anything. So I don't understand why you are expecting a different outcome when you're still doing the same thing. Mm. Right. So those, that was my journey through it. It was a very uncomfortable journey. I will say, I think a lot of people have a hard time, myself included, looking introspectively at themselves and putting ourselves at cause. But I will say the outcome is amazing. I now run a seven figure business where I only go into my physical locations less than 10 hours a week if I want to, if I choose to. I have a team now that is is empowered and accountable for their own decisions. They have the knowledge and skill set and every resource they need to make decisions on their own. And everyone has, we all have a process for which we're all rowing in the same direction. And unless it's an abs, it doesn't get to me unless it's really an absolute emergency. Right. And so it, you know, it took a few years to get us here, but it's joyous. It really is. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love, I love to hear it's joyous. Wow. It's so, um, I hear a lot of also letting go of control, right? When you say, and not everything gets to me, like Mm -hmm. this is also a little bit of a, of a friction point Mm -hmm. often for high achievers and also slowing down when you talked about doing the work internally, this requires slowing down. It's not, okay, so this is going to be done. And by Monday, we're going to have something else. And then no, no, like it actually, there's a process there and it's really about slowing down. And I find that this, this is also something that I find that it can be a friction point for high achievers. It's hard. I, I, I talk about this process as the slowing down to speed up. Yeah. Right. We slow down and there are times in our businesses or lives for that matter that we have to say, I'm really kind of at capacity for what I'm able to do well. So I have to kind of slow it down now in order to be able to speed back up later. <clears throat> and a lot of high achievers are like, I want it done yesterday. And I understand that because I'm the same, but the truth of the matter is, I mean, unless it's like something that really does need to be done yesterday, like not having air conditioning in Florida in the summer when you're having a fitness business, that kind of has to be done yesterday. But these are all problems that have a solution. And if we just like, like what happened a second ago with the, the, I mean, the computer dying, like it happens. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, we move on. It's, it's just how you recover from that. And when we can learn to take things less personally and not catastrophize everything, it really does become, okay, so this is a problem. What's the solution? Right. And, and it really, it is hard for high achievers. I under, I understand that, but we can either continue on this hamster wheel over and over and over again, 
And again, when you keep saying, I don't know why I feel so stressed, <laughs> like something's got to change, like something's got to give, right? And, and again, you have to let people on your team make mistakes. They only learn by making mistakes, right? And you as the, as the I don't care if you're the leader of your family, your sports team, if you are sitting in a role where you are somewhat of the leader, it, it's hard, I get that, but it's the only way people learn and it's the only way people get better, I feel. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, I think that this is this is a hard realization uh, to uh, for many people, including myself, like this is something, uh, you know, this uh, when when you it's, it's easy to say, but when you are there and you're like, trying like really like clenching your hands thinking like, okay, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> this is all the process and so on. Like, this is something that you know, you mm -hmm. navigate through and then everybody comes out uh, comes out better on the other side. Um, I love I, I love I love how you express that. Um, I would like to ask what? Um, how do you do it now in terms of growing your team? Or even like, how do you help your clients do that without like the stress? Do you start with the mindset? Do you include mindset at all? Do we do you go directly into strategies? Well, it kind of depends, to be honest, on the business owner. I think one of my strengths just in life in general is I'm a very perceptive person, meaning I can, <clears throat> I don't know if you know, if you follow like Enneagrams or anything like that. Like mm -hmm. Enneagram, So I'm an Enneagram three, which is like someone who really loves external validation. And so we become chameleons in all these places. And so I can, I can be whomever I need to be to get someone to like build rapport with me. So mm -hmm. Whereas that can be a basement to me. It could be where I try to change myself for someone else, or I just can really get a clear understanding of what do I need to say to Genevieve to get her to love Pilates, right? I, I can get that. So what I can understand where my business owners are, like, where are they? I, I like to look at it in like a glass a full of water. Like, are they at a point where the water spout is like overflowing right now? And we need to like bring it down a little bit. We need to take some water out or are they in a place where like the waters, you know, that's not to the top yet, right? So I kind of, sometimes we just need to cool them down a little bit, right? Um, they can only absorb information that they are ready to absorb. So that's really true. I don't care if you're a patient, my patient, people can only absorb information that they are ready to absorb. So what I think as a good mentor is being able to recognize that in other business owners, where are they at on their journey? What can they absorb now that will get them a win fast mm -hmm. and quick, right? So that they trust in the process and will get to the next level. Okay. So in some people, we, we start with tactics. So in other words, I'll just take a very perfect example. A lot of small business owners, they will um, return emails or, or have their personal phone be their business phone. Like that's one of the number one things I'm like, we're going to change that tomorrow. And here's what I get. No, no, no. But what if somebody's trying to reach me? Okay. Will anyone die today <laughs> if they don't do Pilates? No. Okay, then. So we're going to take off your personal phone from your business phone. We are getting you a business line. Like that is something very tangible that they can do. But small business owners think, well, if I don't get that call, I'm not going to get that sale. And then I'm going to leave money on the table. And then, 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 then. I'm like, let's do it for 90 days. How much money do you think you left on the table, right? So we kind of like get them to really understand I'm not leaving money on the table. And even if I am leaving money on the table. So I said, even if you do lose one sale for, I don't know, $300, is it worth your personal stress and angst that you sleep? I mean, I had a business owner sleep with her phone under her pillow so she could get, I was like, you're insane, okay? <laughs> and you're going down a road that you'll not be able to come back from. So let's just try it. Is it worth the angst and of having your phone on you all the time for $300? I'm just curious, is it, you know? And if she says, yes, it is, then, then we're at a different phase with her. Yeah. Right? I'm at a different place that I have to work with her. 
you know, so that's kind of how we start. We start, sometimes I'll start more with tangible things so they can get the feeling right away of how good it feels mm. not to be so tied into their business. Mm. And you have to start small, right? We have to start small. It's baby steps, right? <clears throat> it's just like as a physical therapist, right? How do babies start to learn how to walk? They don't come out of the crib and start walking. No, they roll first then they crawl, then they pull themselves up to standing, then they walk. So it's not like a business owner comes in. I'm like, okay, we're going to revamp every single one of your systems. It's very uncomfortable to do that. And people will push back. It's like one baby thing at a time. What can you stomach today, today that will make tomorrow less stressful for you? One thing. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Some people are great. Some people are like, okay, I'm ready. Let's do more, more, more. Other people are like, no, it takes, it's going to take me a little while to like acclimate to this. Okay. There's no business is an infinite game. There are no winners and losers in the game of entrepreneurship. None. You don't win. You never win. It keeps going. It keeps going. Yeah. And right? therefore so you never lose. You never lose. It's, it's not a, it's not a game that like the faster you go, the sooner you get to the finish line. It's not. Right. So if it takes you a little longer to get there, that's that's OK. That's your journey. Everyone's journey is different. We don't have to create a business. Like your business doesn't have to look like my business. My business doesn't have to look like Jane down the street's business. I can create a business that's profitable in any capacity of that. I choose to create that business model. in. Yeah. 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 I love that she said that, because I think that also when we create a business, we often think that there's one blueprint and often that's what we're sold of, you know, here's the blueprint, a profitable business. And sometimes it doesn't work for us or it doesn't work for us on the where, where we are right now, right? As you mentioned before. Um, so I'm curious to ask about your culture, like the culture that you build in order for your team to work productively together uh, because, you know, a business is a collective of people and uh, we all abide by different norms or similar norms, which create a culture. So I'd love to hear about that a little bit, how you create that and what it looks like uh, your current culture. Sure. So culture is super important to me. It's been important since day one. Hmm. Um, one of our core values is actually we over me and ride or die are two of our core values, meaning that we are a team. So we rise and fall as a team and ride or die is basically like we stick together when things are hard. Obviously last 24 months have been challenging for brick and mortar businesses. Yeah. Um, so that's how, that's how it works. Right. So mm -hmm. what we, what we always do is, and it starts from the top. I tell people, if you don't set the tone for your culture, it will set its own tone. Right. It does. You are responsible for setting the culture. If not, it will be determined for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what you said was, was true. Business models are different, right? And a lot of business models, if you look at the old school business books, they're, they were designed by older white men that worked in corporate settings and went to suit in a, and went to work in a suit all day and had wives at home baking cakes. Okay. That we don't have to operate like that anymore. Now, what I will say about mine is it could be different because it is a brick and mortar service-based business, which could be different than an online business. So I will preface that by saying we are service providers and we have brick and mortar locations. That means we actually have a physical retail space. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is a little different because most of our team has to be physically present even though we are trying to implement more virtual and work from home realities, it's not really in our wheelhouse because we do teach fitness wellness classes, right? So it yeah. is a little different in that aspect. But one of the things that was really important for me in terms of what success looks like is being able to do what I want, when I want, with whom I want, and how I want. So with my time. So more important than salary, more important than how much revenue I brought in, I wanted to create a place where I was the controller of my time, okay? And that's what I want for the people that work on my team as well. I want to create lucrative career choices for them because I do believe this is career, even though some people look at fitness, teaching Pilates as a hobby, 
I want it to be a career for them. I want them to be able to have retirement. I want them to have time off. I want them to understand that they are the masters of their future or their schedule, however they want that to look. Um, there's no ego where we are. So humbly confident is another one of our core values. We're all really, really good at what we do, but there is humility across the board. Nobody is better than anybody else. Um, so the way that we implement that is we have meetings every month. We have quarterly meetings every quarter where we do like a big deep dive. I review our core values every single meeting every single meeting, we give core value um, rewards out for people that exemplify the core values and we give examples for that. Um, we talk about why we do what we do every single meeting. We talk about who we do it for, right? We talk about what are we actually selling? It's Pilates is technically what we're selling, but that's not really what we're selling. What we're selling is the feeling, the transformation people get. And we are constantly talking about that. And we're, you know, I'm very transparent with my team about our, our numbers, our analytics, why we do certain things, why we choose not to do certain things. Um, we have a process for if, if someone has questions, you know, open door. But at the same time, this is also a job and a career and a profession. So not everyone's going to be happy with every decision all the time, but if they understand that the reason we're making this decision is you have to survive in order to succeed. And if this business doesn't survive, none of us will succeed. So a lot of the decisions, especially in the last two years, were made to keep the business financially solvent so that we all had jobs to come back to and our clientele had a place to come back to. Mm -hmm. And so that is like what we constantly are focusing on. And I might be the owner and the person that technically sits on the top of the accountability chart, but I'm no better than anybody else. I teach, I'll uh, plunge a toilet if I need to. I will, you know, um, fix the air conditioning, but everyone knows what they are accountable for and everyone does their job. Right. Yeah. And I think that that accountability, I tell business owners all the time, you have to be clear, right? I think Brene Brown was one that said clear is kind, right? You have to be yeah. clear on your expectations. And if people don't like clarity, they're not going to like accountability. And if they don't like accountability, they don't belong on your team. I mean, it's really as simple as that. Yeah. Another simple but harsh, harsh truth for for some. I think that um, I love I love how you what you mentioned in terms of clarity of values and talking about it and talking about about what does that look like and behaviors in every day. Like what are specific examples and so on. And and I'd like to ask um, how that affects uh, the, or how that plays when you have new people joining the team? So that is a great question. So when we rolled this out, which was probably four years ago, when I was going through this transition, I was like, I need to be better. My team deserves better. This is how we're going to do it. Right. Yeah. I, I had, I did this, what was called like the state of the company address. And I kind of wrote this sp speech, I guess. I don't know what, you know, and I basically said, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And here's a tough love part of it. If you don't feel bought into this, it's going to be time for you to get off the bus. And I'm, I listen, life is too short for you to be in a place where you're not comfortable. But if, if your core values or you're personally opposed to any of the core values we are now setting for this company, it will not work. You will be resentful. I will be resentful. Neither of us will be happy. It's just not going to work. And some people chose to get off the bus and that was fine. Which is fair. Those that, yeah. yeah, fair. Those that stayed, phenomenal, right? So now when people come in, we talk about our core values during the hiring process, mm -hmm. during the interview process. And we actually have them do a, we give them the core values and we, it's one of our follow-up tasks, like, our onboarding process is pretty lengthy. So after they get through an interview 
after they, they get through two interviews and then we say, you know, here are our core values, choose two that resonate most with you and give us examples of how you would exemplify that in your life or in a previous job or ways that, that there's two things we do. It's either how did you or a team member exemplify that or how did you see it not exemplified that you were not comfortable with or you didn't like in your last employment, right? Yeah. And we do the same speech. I'm like, listen, I'm a small business. When we bring someone in, it's like family to us. So we train you. So if you don't align with these right now and you're like, I'm going to leave in three or four months, please don't take this job because it's just, it's really hard on us. It's hard on you. It's hard on the clients. So we, this is what we expect of you. And if you do these two, three, four things really, really well, you will succeed here. But if you don't feel like this is in your this is not the time for you. I, I might recommend someplace else for you, but let's not do that here. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and so we talk about core values a lot before they even get hired. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, how do you find that affects retention? We have a, we have very little turnover. Yeah. Very little turnover. I mean, we've had Again, we did have some turnover um, like 2020, 2021, just because people's personal lives were yeah. affected, children at home. So we did have some turnover there. But besides that, we've had people on our team seven, eight, nine years. Most of the people that have left have left because they've moved out of state. Hmm. Um, maybe they've moved home or their spouse got relocated. So we have... I mean, in the 10 years I've been in business, I think two people have left and stayed local. They just were ready for something else. Yeah. And this is another thing that I actually worked on myself in therapy was I used to think people left me, right? I used to think people left me. And now I realize, you know what? They're just moving on. And if I was a small part of their journey into whatever they are going to become, then I should just be, you know happy that I was part of that, you know, had the opportunity to be a small part of that. Yeah. I think that, you know, there's that saying that people don't leave jobs, they leave managers, they leave leaders. Yeah. I think that's I had somebody true. Tell me that one time. I had somebody tell me that one time and I was like, you've been, you've been out of school for like 12 seconds. Yeah. And I'm like, somebody told you that and now you're whatever. But I was like, somebody said they left man, you know, she was like, well, I wasn't going to leave a job. I was going to leave a manager. I'm like, yeah. you've been here for like three seconds. Yeah. But I, I mean, I do believe that it's true, not 100% of the time, but I, I, it's true. And what you mentioned is also true because I've seen, I've seen amazing managers creating opportunities, helping people to move on because that was right for them. Or they had an opportunity that they couldn't refuse because they, uh, they helped them grow to a level that they could reach those opportunities. Absolutely. Right? And, th and therefore they were very graciously helping them to move on. Like, I mean, so and that like that's not the case of like you're leaving a manager it's like no actually having had that journey with that manager helped you move to the next step on your own journey so that's like really awesome exactly i yeah. i've had two staff members leave and eventually open their own places elsewhere like they yeah. move now they have very successful businesses and i'm like a incredible. I'm so happy for you. I've had other people, same thing, come to me and they've just got these job opportunities. I'm like, you cannot say no to this. Like you have to go. Yeah. Goodbye. Farewell. <laughs> so I love you. Remember me, but you cannot turn this down. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is a wonderful opportunity, but I also, I, I, I kind of like, what's what I'm looking for. I build in this as part of my team. So like, I'm always building in what if somebody leaves, mm -hmm. right? What do we do? So I'm always kind of trying to think, hedging my bets a little bit, not in the, not like, oh, what if we get divorced type thing? No, but what, I never want to be in a position where I'm scrambling and feeling like I can't survive, right? Because we're doing too much. So I always have somebody like in like the wings ready to to level up. Mm. And so, and we've created an infrastructure now where our processes are so built out. Like if someone go leave, somebody else could step into that, that role and just take on the processes for a very, you know, even if it's temporary. Yeah. 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 And that like, I, I feel like this is such a great like way to kind of close the loop of what you mentioned before, right? To have those processes in place 
so that it's easy also for when something like that happens, not only to liberate yourself, yeah. but also to deal with, um, you know, the uncertainty of, you know, have happens. It's life. Yeah, it's life again. Yeah. People are um, going to leave. I tell people that people will leave you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People will resign. Yeah. So if you're going into business thinking that nobody will ever leave, that's not true. Yeah, Everyone gonna is going to leave, right? At some point, people are going to move on for, mm -hmm. for whatever life reasons are. Yeah. You know, anything. Yeah. So absolutely. You know what? I would love to continue this conversation i'm having so much fun and this is so interesting <laughs> um uh however i'd like to play a game with you are you let's are you game play. let's play I love, games. I love games yes yeah. let's go all right okay um well actually the game uh is more of a getting to know you all right get so to i'm gonna ask you rapid you. fire questions that okay. are you know i would say creative okay. uh i would call them creative and then you have 10 seconds or less to tell me your answer mm, but with that okay. so let's let's get to learn like human the human behind uh the awesome professional so <laughs> if your life was a story what would it be titled from chaos to calm oh that's a great one um what's the most interesting thing in your wallet or purse Oh, that's a good one. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, it's probably like a doggy bag, like a poop bag for my oh. dog. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. What's your dog? I have a little cattle dog. I don't know if you heard him before. He was like, he was like ruffling up like the little bed right next to me. So, oh, yeah. Oh, great. Awesome. Um, I love dogs. I can, you know, I would talk about it all day. Um, what, what topping? should never go on a pizza pineapple oh yeah are you are you <laughs> your don't team understand your it. team anti-pineapple okay great i don't my kids love i don't understand it's a fruit fruit yeah. does not belong on pizza yeah <laughs> i've seen yeah i've seen bananas on pizza oh no yeah okay. yeah that, that's very unfortunate pineapple no yeah that's very unfortunate but yeah okay great um where do you go when you want to be alone? Oh, that's easy because I want to be alone a lot. I go to my room. Okay. Safe place. Mm -hmm. You just, okay, great. Awesome. Um, how many times do you floss? Ooh, a week. I should floss twice a day, but I floss every day. You floss every day. Oh, good I for you. Every day. Uh, very, very. Because you know why? It's more because I hate the dentist, and so I hate flossing less. So yeah, I floss so I don't have to get extra dental work. Yeah, yeah. Good motivation. Good motivation for sure. What is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, uh, my biggest pet peeve is when people don't do what they say they're going to do. So if you commit to something and then you back out, I don't like that. Yeah. 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 yeah I can relate the sticking to your word type of thing. Yeah. 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 Um, what time of the day are you most inspired? In the morning. So right after, like within the first couple hours after I wake up. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And if you could learn any language in a week, what would it be? French. French? Are we? We. <laughs> have you have you learned some French before? Mm, no, I know. I mean, I know the French. You know, je m'appelle Krista. Yeah, uh, I know like the you know je ne sais. Like I know the main things, but that's yeah. It. What would you do if you spoke French? Like if in one week you were like a bras would, bras, you speak French. What would you do? I would go to Paris. Okay, I'd go to Paris and spend like two weeks in in somewhere in France, traveling in France. And, and speaking to people. And speaking to people. French. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's make it happen. French is a breeze. Yeah. Nah, are you kidding? I'm yeah. so glad it's my first language. I wouldn't want to learn it. <laughs> French. French. I've always wanted to learn French. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I hope that you do. I hope that you get to do it. Awesome. Yay. Krista, thank you so Bye. much.
for being uh, with me today on the Min Green Ukulele podcast. Where can we find more of you and your awesomeness? So you can find me. I'm most active on Instagram. So I'm at Krista Gurka. Right. Uh, I'm very into making like ridiculous reels that make myself laugh. And so you can check them out. You can also see my website, KristaGurka.com. Awesome. Great. And all the links will be in the description of the podcast. Thank you so much for being with me. I so enjoyed our conversation. Thank you for sharing your wisdom so generously. I know that the audience will get a lot, a lot from it. Uh, and uh, well, au revoir. Je Thank te you. Souhaite, uh... Au revoir. <laughs> au revoir. How do you say until next time? À la prochaine. Okay, I don't think I'm going to do that. À la prochaine? No. À la prochaine. À la prochaine, yeah. À la prochaine. À la prochaine. Go. I'm going to be like Emily in Paris. I'm going to be Krista in Paris. And I'm yeah. going to learn. French. Good. There, there you go. You. I love that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thanks to your audience. Woohoo. Have a great day, you guys out there. Thank you so much for watching or listening to the Man Green Ukulele podcast. You can follow and reach out to our guests at the links available in the description of this podcast. If you enjoyed or drove for conversation today, please consider subscribing or leaving a review. I would love to hear from you. You can find me on LinkedIn. And you can come and say hello. Or if you want to hang out, I host regular free master classes where we play our way to less stress and more joy. So you can find all the information on my LinkedIn profile. I hope to see you soon. Ciao.